This Adobe class is for be beginners. You've never used Photoshop before. You're so new or if complete newbie, you know, in Photoshop. Um, this is your class and it promises to be fun. I'll show you through things, what you'll be learning. I'll introduce Photoshop, about Photoshop, navigating through Photoshop, the menus, how to open, how to create new files. Getting started with Photoshop, exploring the tools, amazing tools Photoshop has. Then uh, the menu bar, the option bars, the uh, the panels, the menus, the the documents, the canvas. You know that's the workspace you're gonna you know be doing the designs, customizing the interface, and also customizing you know Photoshop environment such that it can suit you. You decide to convert it to white, black, whatever color you want to do. You will see it's, it's very it's very interesting. You know, working with images, of course, Photoshop is, you know, a, an image-based application that helps you to manipulate your pictures, you know, do designs, do great designs, do effects and the like. You know, we're going to be zooming, teaching you everything you need to know about you know, images, how to navigate through them, your shortcuts, how to use the new adjustment panel, your max panels, the vibrance, color corrections, you know, when you attempting to have some images that are very bad, very poor, the cameras didn't take them very well, the lighting was poor, you can use Photoshop to do all of those adjustments. So we're doing all of that and we're we'll cropping images also, you know, understanding res resolution of pixels because Photoshop basically deals with, you know, uh, images. So they're usually pixels that are, it's, it's like a, an image is like a map of pixels tiny tiny boxes that make up an image if you zoom very closely we'll get to that you get to understand it so we'll be checking you know true cropping resizing trimming images you know the basic selection the marquee tools you know the polygonal the lasso tools and the like um we'll be working with layers how to of course that will be on the layer panel we'll get to that but let me just run you through this first Grouping layers, working basically with layers and the like, the blend modes, the opacity, modifying text and creating text, amazing, amazing stuff. Also painting using the paint brush, the 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 color palette that has the color swatches too and the gradients. We're using the, the brush, we're using a lot of things, the resolve, the pen, tools. I'm also resizing this is my favorite part, you know, resizing and retouching images you can correct color correct the eye right at times when you snap pictures you see you know red eyes how to correct it the constant to the patch to the healing brush the spot healing brush you know the tool and the focus painting with history then color correction the the, the, the variations the auto commands adjustments you know levels and the like we're doing the quick max mode too too we have the, the, the quick marks, how to use, how to match up the images and objects, even text, amazing effect, how to use um, the pen to us uh, like a pro. Um, uh, we'll be working after designing, doing some other things on the canvas, how to export it, you know, in the format that you require. Maybe you want to put it on Facebook, put it on Instagram, you know, put it on, maybe you want to design a cover photo of. Um, your YouTube channel, you know, all great stuffs, how to save, export them. Once again, you're welcome to the Adobe Beginners class. This is a class for beginners. We're teaching you Adobe Photoshop. Now, we'll be launching Adobe Photoshop. And while that is launching, I'd like to explain what um, Adobe Photoshop really is and what it's um, used for. So let's scroll to Adobe. So let's just open the one of um, 64 bit. Now, while that is opening, Adobe Photoshop is a software that is used extensively for raster image editing. What I mean by raster image editing is images that are not vectors. It's also used for graphic design and digital art. It it makes use of um, layering. To allow for depth and flexibility in design and editing process as well as provide powerful editing tools that when combined are capable of just about anything it was created by two brothers thomas and john Knoll in 1988 
was sold to um, Adobe um, Systems, thereby was marketed as um, Adobe Photoshop and it has ever since then become the industry standard for raster image editing, graphics and digital art. So it promises to be amazing. Now this is the Photoshop um, interface. Here at the top here we have the menu bar. This is the menu bar and this is the option bar. Now this menu bar contains commands, options, you know that you can navigate through to achieve a lot of effect now this option bar contains a dynamic bar it's just a dynamic bar it changes to the qualities of anything you select on the on the toolbox now this is the toolbox we're going to be customizing the environment now these are palettes these are panels the color palette this is swatch swatches palette the adjustment palette the style I have a whole lot of them, so we'll just be closing some of them so that we can. And this is the layer palette. The layer palette has a channel palette where you have the RGB and the like of the parts. Um, so let's just close some of them so that I'll show you where you can get them in case you want to customize. Usually, when you open your your Photoshop environment, this is how it you know shows. This is what it shows. The environment it shows. Now let's get started. Now the menu bar. Just a moment all right now the menu bar this is where you have your you want to create a new document you have your open browsing bridge mini bridge open as smart object open recent this works that you've done before and you know close close all and all of that import and automate exit you know that's where you have that's what you have under the menu bar now this helps you to achieve a lot of things you know if you notice this is just a blank page it's not like um, um, the word uh, MS Word that when you open the application automatically you see the document and you can start typing Photoshop here it helps you to you know customize the environment what you want to do the size the page setup and the like so you can do all of the page setup you know creating new from your menu the refine menu here this is the editing where you can copy paste do a lot of stuff we'll be navigating there now the way this class is structured is, is such that we'll be having practicals and theory at the same time i'll be explaining and doing the practicals for you to see so they can be very interesting promises to be very interesting then we have the layer menu we have the type uh, type basically is for text so when you see the t like on the two boxes for text where you can have your text manipulations here select select options deselect reverse inverse and the like then the filter the reason why most of these drop downs are not active this is what i call a drop down the reason why it's not active is because we have not created our document or our canvas all right now there's a view zoom in zoom out and all of that the windows now most of these things that you see, the palette, the panel, the toolbox, you can always get them here under the tool and um, under the Windows menu. This is the Windows menu. So when you go to the Windows, you can have like if I click on the two the tools, you know, these are tools, this will disappear. You notice it disappeared. The history, the history has disappeared. Okay, the character, that's for text, manipulations or formatting. Then the adjustment, you see the adjustments no longer there. Then the swatches, and this is the option. You can see how plain and blank the environment is because we you know we deselected all of them. Okay, now if you want to bring them back, of course, we'll have to go back to we'll be needing all of them. So we want to bring them back, we'll come back to Windows. Let's start with the tools. We've got the tools get the toolbox here you can always drag the toolbox with this from here you can make it just click on this double arrows you know to toggle through whether you want everything to show like this or you want it a bit clean so you'll just have it like this and of course you can always drag you know to attach it to the environment the environment is detachable all right you can drag it okay you can drag once you drag it in order to detach it to attach it to the environment you know when you drag you drag it to the stream you notice this blue line then you just release it 
with your left button you release it you can toggle through to have it like this you can click to have it like this too then let's come in let's bring in some of the the panels that we we deselected this is a layer so this is a layer palette your palette with the channel the pan the parts you can always customize it just how you want it then you have your you have your color color also comes with um, this swatch there's an array of different colors comes with a swatch then you have your um, colors um, keep it aside uh, toggle you can toggle you know you can have it like this then I just have other so that we don't uh, waste too much time um, we have the history history is just like a part it's just a palette that keeps records of any action that happens on the on the um, the canvas or the document so what are, let's talk about let's go to adjustment all right it's adjustment we can bring this down we can drag this down if you want it down you can just do whatever thing you really want to do with it okay have it nice and clean so if i need any one i can always click on it it would you know pop out there's a swatch you know you can just form okay now this is it, the adjustment this is amazing amazing you know palette to be using very very soon just want to show you you know how the environment looks like okay this channel there's a part but basically when you're using the the, the pen too okay now let's go to I think I like this this way now let's let's create an environment since we said it's gonna be very practical let's create an environment we have the file menu let's go to new we want to create a new document you can use your control N or you can come to file and you know click on new all right um, now this is the the dialog box that shows if it's in uh, an advanced version you have you know an array of different you know templates now we have this you can enter your name as a beginners class beginners class then this is a precept where you can select you know page size paper size and like it's for photo you can use any of this yeah that's two by three four by six and the like but i'm gonna be using this let's let's use um the one for maybe instagram let's use four by four you can customize it also four by four this is for your width is your height you can use any of this measurement unit um, you have in inches you can use if you're designing for a website for example you can use pixel this for inches depending on the kind of measurements you want to use it's for centimeters it's millimeters points and the like so i'll stick with inches for the purpose of the tutorial then we'll use we'll go to four four then the resolution basically the minimum resolution should be 300 so that when you zoom your picture it will not be pixelated the, the resolution will not be broken it will still be very good even when you use it on um on your social media platforms it can really still come out very good then the color mode we leave the color mode at um, rgb or features now the gray scale makes it completely black and white anything you do any color let me let me do it gray scale anything you do any color you select there would be black and white now this is our what document or our canvas we selected four by four if you check the measurement is a complete square now any color i choose here for example would come out black and white now if i select a color for example you know you see that it is changing here this is your foreground this is your background color i will show you how to apply colors just in a moment but i just want to explain that um, grayscale now if you notice any color that i select on this color uh, swatch 
here is changing to a grayscale, either a deeper shade or a lighter shade. Now, if I go for yellow, it's a bit lighter. Please just watch this. That's because I selected a color mode that is that is um, grayscale. Of course, I can always change it if I want to. I can go to image, go to mode, look at the grayscale. I can change it to RGB. Now, look at the color automatically changed. I can select any one that I want. Okay, then you see it. Now, let's go back to the new. Let's create inches. Four, I'm going to use four by four. Use 300, don't forget 300. Now you can use CMY keys for print purposes. This color lab, all of the same, they are very, very nice. You can just leave this advanced for now. So you just click on OK. Please don't forget to rename it. Let's say class 2. Class 2, alright. Great. Okay, now let's talk about our toolbox. Let me drag it out. Toolbox. Now this is your new. I want to open existing. We create. We, we work with new already. You want to create. You want to open an existing file to take you to your document where you can open a file. Now it will save it for you. Mind you, if you open different documents they get registered here oops we forgot our option bar let's go and bring our option bar options good let's click on our option All right this is the option bar is here now let's get straight up business now this is a workspace here all right you're welcome let me show you how to quickly do the prefer setting you want to customize interface you can always move your toolbox with this you don't move from here basically alone you can move from here you know here you can move from here that's if it's in this individual we want to collect we want to carry the them collectively you can always use this you know plain um, panel so let's come to the let's edit our interface let's say I don't want this color I want something lighter or maybe white you know I can always change it if I want and take for example you you create a new document let's choose our color our background content I want a transparent background usually when you open a transparent background it comes with this pattern this white and um, you know harsh pattern let's say I don't want this I want to I want to use something like maybe green and white or something I want to use white I want to customize I just want my workspace to be as I want basically so you can just come to your edit edit menu you know I explained that these things are pop-up or drop-down menu they can always get them under this thing so I just come to my edit see my preference preference then I can come to general it open a dialog box and this is the dialog box now this dialog box helps me to customize my workspace as I want it my interface now if you notice this is this color so I can I can change the color theme I, are you seeing it I can change the color theme I can make it a bit darker you can see how the color is changing even the palettes are also affected you know so I can change it that way or obviously I don't want I just want maybe black for this work area and I want uh, maybe uh, light gray and I want maybe for the full screen full screen you can leave it at uh, light gray or black okay now let's say I want if I want white or let's use a custom color select custom color I use complete white. Just drag to the colors. You can, if you don't want blue category, you can drag this up. Okay, drag it up. If you want to use green, it changes to green. Depending on what basically you want, but it's always very advisable that you stick with something that is um, uh, calm, something that will draw your focus to 
your workspace so that's why it's always advisable you use these dark ones is dark gray and dark gray i think i'll stick with dark gray but i just decided to show you and let's say you want to have this ones you know um change the cursor the brush you want to you can always do your modification here and this is transparent gamut you want to change this you notice this is white and gray so maybe i want to change it to um let's say white and green light green you can see how it's changing you can change this to white of course you know you won't really enjoy it it's always better that you have a calm color that will always give you but i decided to show you this so you can you can also change the grid smallness of the grid you can make it big you can make it small just just play around with it just the way you want photoshop gives you that leverage to interact with it so i'll leave it as light of course when you click ok because when you click ok let's say you want a particular color let's say this color then let's say particular color then select select the white so whatever color that you want you can always play around really that's how to change the cameras but i'll just leave it at this light and i'll leave it at um, medium medium is okay for me now this is the ruler you start doing some measurement you start making use of ruler you can leave a custom setting because this is okay by me but you can select whatever thing that you want you know these are the measurements you need and the points and the, you can use your now let's say you want to change the ruler if we let me close this and show you something quickly once you get the ruler, you come to view menu, and you come to ruler, you use your control R. Now you see this ruler, this is the horizontal, this is the vertical. When I drag this in, you see that the color, this is the default color that Photoshop gives. I see this color, you can let's drag it in. How do you drag it in? You make sure you take your mouse cursor, that's the move tool, you take it there and drag it, you know, drag it anywhere. Now you see the color is, I don't want this color, I maybe I want something like red. I can really connect so that I can only see it, you know, easily or something. Then I can come to edit, come to preference, come to, come to like, guides, grids, and so just come. You can see this color, this is cyan. I can change the color to red. Automatically it changes to red. Okay. And change it to any color. That I want this one also you can also change them. This ones are smart guides. Change them. Change them. So that's about them. To take out the view, you can also use your you can come back here. And if you want to bring in you click on alright. So that's about that. See you in the next video. Now this is the canvas. Of course, remember the paste setup that we used. Now these are two blocks. You can always carry your tools from. This is move to. This the mark the mark you family. The M M can actually be used. Letter M can actually be used for it as a shortcut. So you have a rectangular mark you, elliptical mark you single row mark you this is gonna be a basic class so I'm gonna run this basics so you bear with me only that fast and the single columns we will just practicalize then we have this basically for selection actually you can use your shift hold your shift to add your shift key and use your alt key to subtract Right. So this L is good too to make it perfect. You can hold your shift key while you draw. Alright, that's about that. Then this is lasso too. 
like a freehand selector where you can select it to freehand and these all this could actually be used for tracing images so I want us to be very practical I want us to be very practical so now this is the lasso tool you can use the lasso tool to trace but it's not usually the advisable tool or the best tool to use why because because we're human beings we can't be that perfect when you're trying to draw things uh, so you may not get perfectly and if you want to trim advice you use your control plus to zoom or you can hit your z as you come to this key just drag you can use your alt key to take it back alt click it's too much or up to pizza drag it like this Okay. So H to hit when you hit your H it turns to the palm two or the hand two. Use your H this is Z for your zone two. So let me just illustrate the user of this. Basically you can have your feather up and down, you know can have this out and carry it now when you take, click on the move tool it just moves that part out yeah control z let's talk about the shortcut you're welcome again uh, we're gonna have talk about the toolbox let's explore the toolbox uh, let's create um well let's open no uh, image I think I have I love this mother and child uh, let's just get to, to it now we've, we talked about the move to help us let go to the pillar they have palette double click you can move this you know you can even duplicate how do you duplicate? You can use ctrl J to duplicate have to you know um, layers I told you that when you let's say you resize can resize holding the alt and shift key to make it even you can always double click or you press the enter button to apply transformation we talked about the, uh, the mark u2 now let's talk about this um lasso tool the lasso tool basically is a free hand tool it's for trimming you can use a free hand to trim out objects or images or layers basically so as you want to have this you can right click on it copy via layer you can click on the move to now look at this okay look at this now i use my free hand to, to trim this out okay um, you can delete you can delete this by just hitting the backspace or you can drag it to this delete you can come to layer palette and drag this to the delete and boom it's gone all right that's for the free hand. You can use for music store. Let's say I want to draw. Yeah, I'm gonna draw a mango. I hope my hand is on the straight. Oh, 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 oh. Oops. Yeah. I tried. Oops. Ctrl Z. Alright, let's say I want to add some more. Let's say I want to add some like leaf or something. I just hold my shift key. It changes to plus sign. If I want to remove, you know, add a minus or add and subtract. If I want to remove, maybe I want to remove this part. I just want to drag out this part alone. I can hold my alt key it changes you will notice the cursor it changes to minus there this one changes to plus and if i don't click anything this is what you have so let's add a little i can hold the shift key and drag out this oops let's say i want to have this object i want to use this object to trim this um image so i can just right click on it i would have a, a click on a layer via copy then I have this. I click view. I press V on the keyboard. Then I have this. As if it's part clipped or it's clipped into it. No, it's not. I just use the lasso to to trim out. You know, that's that's about that. Let's delete this. Let's go to the next one. And by the way, let me just delete this one so that I can have this. I can zoom. How do I zoom? I can use my zoom tool. 
because I want to have it a bit closer so I can trace out. I want to zoom. So this is your palm tool. This is your zoom tool. Your zoom tool is Z. So when I click on my zoom tool, I can just click. It zooms closer. Oops, my image is not that. It's pixelated. All right, we'll just use it that way. Okay. Now well, let's get another image quickly because I want to have something very exciting. Okay, let's go back to this. Let me click on this image. I love this image. Good. Now let's let's use this. Now, if I want to open multiple uh, images very quickly, let me just show you that. Open when you get to the object or the image. Click on this. You can hold the the control key depending on how many images you want. Hold the control key. Control key. And click. And click open. So it's open all the images. This one, this one, and this one. Okay. All right. So I can only toggle. I can even copy from one uh, canvas to the other. I can drag it simply to this other canvas and drop it. Okay. And do the same too. Drag and drop. So let's go back to our trimming. I think I guess I will just close this since the image is not that clear. So let's go to our trimming. I love this now. Let's use our lasso tool to trim first. Now you discover that if I want to trim this out, I may not be able to get it perfectly because of course it's freehand except maybe I'm using the tablet to drag it out. I won't be able to get it control J to, to I won't be able to get it perfectly. So what do I do to get these images out? I can use my polygonal lasso tool, I can use my magic magnetic lasso tool. All of these things can get them with L button. And don't forget you can hold your alt key and click inside for the for the other tools to you know appear. So we're working with our lasso tool, polygonal lasso tool. So the lasso tool, what it does basically, just the way it sounds polygonal, it helps you to give it gives you a continuous straight line until you Get back to the point where you started from, then it creates a macule. This thing is running around, it's called a macule. So, so we can now trim out. Usually, it's advisable to zoom in before you trim so you can get the edges very well. And if the parts are very, if the edges are clear, you can use the magnetic glass or two. If they're not that clear, you can equally use you know the polygonal lasso or two. And the way it works is the lasso or two. They are intertwined and interrelated. If I'm using the Mark U2, for example, I can always toggle to the um, polygonal lasso tool. What do I mean? As this is very straight, let me use the polygonal lasso tool. How do I zoom, zoom in? I come to view, zoom in. Then, if I want to draw it close, I can drag this or I can pan with my arm tool. Click on the arm tool and drag it down. Okay? Or just a shortcut. What am I going to do? Let's say go back. Now you can use your control plus, your control plus on your keyboard, and you can pan with your pan to your hand to here is you can get your hand with H. The, the shortcut is H. Then you can just drag it and move it up. It moves the whole document, not the object itself, or not the layer itself. So let's get to. Polygonal lasso tool. I can also use the scroll button of my mouse to move it up and down. So if it's not too clear, you can still zoom in. Then hold the space bar. The space bar can convert any tool you select to a palm tool. Okay. The space bar usually converts it to a palm tool. Any tool you select. Instead of coming back to the tool, let's say I select uh, my. I selected my move tool. And I want to carry. I have to go and click on the hand tool then carry then go back to the move tool instead of doing that i can just click on my move tool for example and hold my space bar on the keyboard it changes it changes to the hand tool then i can carry and release the space bar it changes back to the particular tool I'm, I'm, i was using currently before i before i selected the other two then i can go back to the polygonal tool then i'll pick the edges now when you click you just start tracing through the edges this into the edges 
press into the edges what you just do you move to the next one and click move to the next one and click move to the next one and click okay now if you make any mistake for example you mistakenly click this like this you can hit the space the backspace on your mouse on your keyboard I, get, I beg your pardon your keyboard then you continue 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 you can drag this out or hold the space bar and move hold it move and release it all right then uh, there will be need for me to zoom out that's control minus control plus is to zoom in control minus is to zoom out then you can click out click out click out since these ones are perfect all right so if you notice you have a marquee around it or basically if you want to do that you have a marquee around it let's say i want to remove this part i just want it to be straight and perfect so i'll just hold my since we said that plus is to add you know my alt is to shift key when you hold the shift key it changes it to plus when you hold the alt key it changes it to minus so i'll hold the minus key the alt key which converts it to minus then i just hold the shift key to make it straight for me then i click then i click again then i come here and i release it and click out because i want to cut this out did you get that well, let me try it again all right if i want to subtract this this part i don't like okay i hold my hot key hot is for subtract it changes to the icon subtract then the shift key changes to what mod uh, addition that's add then i hold my alt key and click instead of having to click because it may not be straight you know that our shift key usually is for making things straight and making it perfect especially if we want to resize or, or scale or screw or rotate so i'll hold that shift key while i'm still holding you can even release your mouse you release your hand from the alt key i just hold since you have initiated the subtract already you can just hold the shift key and click then click again then click this time around since it's this part that we want to trim out i will just go come and clean clean up this part okay because if we do it the other way around it will only deselect let me click this for example if i do this like this it will only select this part it means that i subtracted this part but that's not what we want we just want this part alone and subtract this other part so i'll just come hold the alt key click hold the shift key and click and click and click out i can leave the shift key so that i can be flexible so that i can have this out now okay now what have we been using since we've been using the word the polygonal lasso too are you following all right i believe you're following now now to get this market remember we said that you can right click and get copy if you want to copy it out let's use the move to discover that there's some edges again there's some edges you know it's not that clean but is you can still get a better cover out if you take your time out to edit let's use now we got this from what your your polygonal lasso tool now let's let's use the magic lasso tool let's use the magic lasso tool okay now the first thing we have to zoom out all right you hold your space bar don't forget then Let's go to the marquee to the magic um, lasso to beg your pardon. Then I can click. What this does is it uses an um, artificial intelligence to trace out the sharp edges. So you, it would. What I just have to do is I don't have to be clicking part time. I just have to be moving it. Once I click once, I just be moving it around. And where there's mistake, I backspace. And even part that I want straight, I can hold the 
the the hot the hot button and convert it to polygonal it changes back to the polygonal let's let me experiment this so that you can see okay and i'll click on this then i just move it slightly now any part that is falling out you can backspace you can zoom out hold the space bar to pan then i want to convert because this is it's falling and i want this part so what do i do I just have to convert it to the polygonal lasso tool by holding my alt key. When I hold my alt key down and click, it changes to the polygonal lasso tool immediately. Then I can just click and release it and continue if I want. But if I'm not satisfied with that, I can just um, click the backspace and still hold the alt key while I'm clicking so that it will maintain the polygonal lasso tool click and click and click and click and click then if I'm satisfied that okay that's passed that part I can just release the alt key and continue some part that you may have to click while you're tracing out hold the space bar and, and pan it up trim it out very interesting very interesting when you have a plain object with a white background an object with a white background now I, if i want to get a straight line i won't be able to get straight if i continue so i have to still hold my alt key here hold my alt key and click and make it straight and click compound holding my space bar compound pan out you can hold this shift key to make it straight for me uh, click just click out can hold the sheet key to make it straight so whichever method is easier for you you can always use it but photoshop gives you a leverage to use different you make sure you come back to uh, your last if place you started the point you started first so that you can complete the marking so you can also zoom out zoom out zoom out you can right click not with the move to because the move to will not uh, give you uh, let's say you don't even want that option you can use ctrl j to duplicate okay or you can still click any of the mark you either this one the last one the mark you anyone you can right click you can cut you can copy all right then we have this out so we still have this problem with this edge so how do I because most of most of the images that I use they don't have that kind of edge so how do I treat that um, issue basically what I would do is I have to convert it back to mark you so what will I do how do I convert it back to mark you using the, the, the edges so I'll just hold my control key and click when I hold my control key notice it changes to a mark you selection on this look at look at this the cursor now when I when I put it on the thumbnail in the layer palette, I'll just click. I'll click on it, it will give me a mark, then I can release my control key. So what do I do? I have to apply a little mark you contrast such that it would it will contrast the selection a little to make it come inward a little so that we can trim those ones out, the unwanted part, the blue part out. So what are we gonna do? We said that this is the menu bar, so we'll come to the menu, we'll come to select, we we'll come to modify, right? Come to select, we'll come to modify, then you come to there's border, there's smooth, there's expand, there's contrast. We're gonna work with contrast. I will I will talk about these things later. Well let's work with contrast for now. We'll contrast. Now it will give me a dialog box. This contrast will help me to make it to to shrink the mark you a little such that the unwanted part can be deselected so that when I when I copy it or copy violet uh, layer I can have that um, smooth edges without um, the blue tint that it had before so let us use let me let me stick with one let's do one first okay you may not see it almost immediately but you see that it has you know reduced the macu that it brought it inward so what do I do now? Then I can right click. I can click on the marquee. I can right click. 
let's say we copy now how do i know that it has been it has been effect let me carry this now let's let's compare and contrast can you see these edges this was the one that we copied from this was the one that we contrasted just now can you see these edges let me zoom it out so that you can see can you see this edge? though we still have some of course we can see apply a little contrast to read can you see this can you see these edges so let's apply a little contrast to it. Let's apply a little contrast to it. I know we'll get to a point where we'll be selecting air, like the air in our, in our eyes, we're not supposed to cut it out. But we'll get to that class later. But I'm just trying to show you, you know, how you can achieve this first. So that I don't complicate um, things. This is a beginner class, and as we evolve, we'll get to know all of that. All right, now let's, um, let's on a little contrast again. This time around, let's assume we we didn't do it at all. So let's go to select. Let's go to contrast. Select, modify, and contrast. If it's shortcut, can you use Alt S, Alt S, then modify, Alt S M. Then this is C. It's Alt S M C. Alt S M C it gives you contrast. Alt S M C. Now. Let's use two. Let's use two. Are you there? Now it brought it down further. But we have to be careful so it doesn't cut our images too much. So we'll just have. Let's right click. There, copy. Alright. Can you see that it's a bit neater and better than the first one that we did? It was the first. Uh, Alright. Move this up. Now this layer, there are two layers, okay? There are three layers actually on this layer, even four. Because we duplicated one. Now uh, this this is what I want on top. I want it up, so I can just drag this up, or I can use my control parentheses. There's this bracket parentheses you can use up to take it up. Okay, or you can page up. You can arrange it and page up. Okay, let, let me just use this one here. Alright. Now this is a smart one that we want, okay? So this is a bit smoother and better. That's what I don't like this. So let me just zoom it close. I pan it. I don't want this so I just I can still edit it. Okay, let's use our polygonal. See how these edges are scoped. I can delete. Let's trim it out neatly. 